My name is Sarah Smith, a 26-year-old full-time housewife. I've been married for three years, and we don't have a child yet. My husband's name is Aaron, a 30-year-old office worker. We met when I was working as a receptionist at a company, and he approached me as he was from one of our clients. We dated for two years before getting married. Before we got married, there was no mention of living with his parents, but as soon as our marriage was decided, my mother-in-law insisted on living together. I told my husband that I didn't want to live together during our newlywed days, but he said, you'll be working as a housewife and I'll be working at the company. Fair enough. Then he showed me his palm in front of my face and gestured for me to stop talking. I reluctantly agreed to live together, thinking it might be inevitable, since I was marrying the eldest son. After we decided to get married, we planned to visit the wedding venue together, but my mother-in-law always came with my husband. I felt uncomfortable when my mother-in-law started interfering with the wedding plans and even my husband's attire. I looked at my husband, and I couldn't help but think, is he marrying his mother? He seems so happy about it. Honestly, I felt down, thinking, I'm going to live with a mama's boy and his mother. Since I couldn't stand feeling this way, I asked my husband when we were alone, Aaron, are you a mama's boy by any chance? He looked puzzled and asked why. I told him, because usually couples decide on wedding plans together, and I've never heard of a mother coming along and interfering. He replied, she just had some free time and came along. It's not meddling, it's advice. Don't worry about it, and I'm not a mama's boy. When he asked, what would you do if I were a mama's boy? I replied, I wouldn't marry you. It would feel too uncomfortable, right? It's better to stop the wedding now for our future. I answered honestly. My husband said, I'm not a mama's boy, and I'll protect you if my mother does anything to you. And laughed. <laughs> So I decided to trust him and go ahead with the marriage. After that day, my mother-in-law never came to the wedding venue again. We had our wedding, moved our belongings into our room at his parents' house, and left for our honeymoon. When we returned and tried to unpack, we found that our room had already been tidied up. I was surprised to see that the furniture, which I had planned to buy later, was already set up. Everything from curtains to bedding was ready and the room was prepared for us to live in immediately. I couldn't find my belongings, so I asked my husband about them. He replied, You'll have to ask my mother. I don't know. So I went downstairs to ask my mother-in-law. I said, Thank you for tidying up our room, but I can't find my things. Do you know where they are? She replied, Oh, your stuff? I threw away everything. I thought it was unnecessary. I said, my bank book and other valuable items were also in there. She assured me, don't worry, I'm keeping them safe. Everything else has been thrown away. I was taken aback, but said to my mother-in-law, these are my personal belongings. Please give them back. The bank book is from when I was single, so they belong to me. Reaching out my hand to her, my mother-in-law made a sour face. How dare you defy me? A mere daughter-in-law. Fine, I will give you your bank book. Wait here. She stomped off with a loud footfall to fetch them. When she returned, she tossed my bank book on the floor. Frantically, I checked the contents and found that a whopping $10,000 had been withdrawn. Mother-in-law, did you withdraw $10,000? I asked, to which she nonchalantly replied, Of course, I bought your furniture, didn't I? I was at a loss for words. I quickly returned to my room, and while seething with anger, relayed this incident to my husband Aaron. Aaron, however, responded, Ah, so she bought this furniture. Thanks. I lost my temper at his response. Hey, using my savings without permission is a crime. And to top it all off, this hideous furniture and curtains? Who wouldn't be angry? Seeing my anger, Aaron said, I'll go talk to my mom, and left to speak with his mother. I regretted deciding to live together, as I dreaded what might come next. As I looked around, the curtains adorned with large roses against a pink background, 
the cheap looking wardrobe that reminded me of my childhood, every sight made me sigh. <sighs> Exhausted, I lay down on the bed. The cover was cherry patterned. Whether it was an act of spite or kindness, I couldn't tell, but it made me sad. While I was feeling this way, Aaron returned from speaking with his mother. She's angry and wouldn't listen. He said, She says she didn't deserve to be complained about when she did all of this out of goodwill. I asked him aghast, Don't you feel sad looking at this furniture? These curtains and the bed cover. Aaron looked around the room, his face paling. Let's change it a bit, without her noticing, he said, trying to placate me. And the money? Will I get the money back? I asked. I was not working hard and saving my money for such frivolous things. Aaron apologized on his mother's behalf and said he would repay me bit by bit from his salary and bonus. I also apologized to Aaron for starting a fight with his mother on our first day living together and despite not wanting to, told him I would apologize to his mother. When I apologized to her, saying, Mother-in-law, I'm sorry for my rude remarks earlier, she replied, So you're the type to complain about even the smallest things. But remember, if you defy me again, there will be consequences. She forgave me for the incident. The next morning, my mother-in-law woke me up at 4 a.m., she told me to buy bread from a bakery in the neighboring town that opens at 5 a.m. Considering yesterday's incident, I simply said yes and decided to go to the bakery. I wanted to ride my bike, but I couldn't find the key. I thought the key might still be on the bicycle, so I went outside, but the bicycle was nowhere to be found. It had probably been thrown away, so I decided to go for a run to the bakery. I changed into my sneakers, put on my favorite tunes, and ran through the city streets in the early morning. It felt wonderful. Returning with freshly bought bread, I was about to take a shower when my mother-in-law stopped me. You're not working, so no need for the shower. Just wipe off your sweat with a towel. She scolded, throwing a towel at me. Realizing that she was still upset about yesterday, I gave up on the idea of showering. I prepared breakfast for my in-laws and my husband, Checking the ingredients in the fridge, I enjoy cooking and can decide on a menu just by looking at the available ingredients. Although there weren't many, I managed to prepare breakfast, woke up my husband, and informed my in-laws that breakfast was ready. When my in-laws and husband sat at the table, I was about to join them when my mother-in-law said, You can't eat with us. You're the daughter-in-law, right? You should eat after we're finished and the cleanup is done and she wouldn't let me sit at the table. I looked at my husband, but he avoided my gaze, acting as if he didn't know what was happening. Are these house rules from the 1950s? I muttered to myself, but I obeyed my mother-in-law nonetheless. When my husband was leaving, he mouthed, sorry to me and bowed his head in apology. I couldn't help but chuckle at his gesture. <laughs> I thought to myself, my husband isn't considerate, and I need to make this house a place he wants to come back to. I told my mother-in-law, I'll start with the cleaning, and began to tidy up. She was sitting on the couch, occasionally glancing my way, but never responding. Because my mother-in-law was around, I decided to clean the living room last, keeping busy with laundry and cleaning the rest of the house. When only the living room was left, I noticed my mother-in-law was gone. After the cleaning was done and I was about to make some tea, I noticed a small window next to the fridge was open and I could hear my mother-in-law's voice. It seemed she was talking with a neighbor. As I casually sipped my tea, I realized she was talking about me. She was telling the neighbor that I had taken her bank book and she had no money to spend freely. Unable to hold back, I confronted my mother-in-law when she returned to the house. Please. Don't lie to the neighbors. When did I ever take your bank book? I asked. Startled, she quickly closed the window and yelled, Just do whatever you want, before storming off to her bedroom. Realizing that this could create an uncomfortable situation for my husband, caught between his mother and me, I decided to try and be more understanding towards my mother-in-law. 
but she continued to act as if I wasn't there. Even when I tried to engage her in conversation, she ignored me as if I were invisible. My father-in-law was also a non-entity, unable to oppose his domineering wife. He was the head of a veterinary clinic, a quiet man who started talking to me little by little. When the clinic was closed on a Wednesday, I had a chance to have a long chat with him. You know, she's told me she's okay with getting a divorce. He confided. But since you're still together, she can't be serious. Maybe she's testing your affection, huh? You're certainly loved, aren't you? We shared a laugh, listening to each other's complaints. Behind the scenes, I felt like I had an ally. My only solace was my father-in-law. Thanks to him, I never vented my complaints or frustrations about my mother-in-law to my husband. It seemed my mother-in-law was complaining about me to my husband. Whenever my husband told me about what my mother-in-law was saying, I would respond with, I'm sorry, I'll be careful, to put him at ease. No matter how much mother-in-law ignored me, I worked hard and didn't slack off in household chores. Despite this, she continued to treat me as if I was invisible. I was fortunate to have a good relationship with the neighbors. In the midst of all this, my husband's job became busy and his business trips increased. When my husband was away on business, I dreaded the increased time I had to spend alone with my mother-in-law. Whenever my husband would call, which was rare, I would tell him that I was getting along without any conflicts with mother-in-law. I sincerely hoped that I could get along with her someday. Even though she treated me like air, I never stopped trying to talk to her. I believed that the only way to improve our relationship was to show my mother-in-law, my future self. So I worked hard in everything I could. I continued my routine of waking up early and running to the bakery, which I had been doing since the day we got married. Before I knew it, three years had passed since our marriage. As usual, mother-in-law treated both me and father-in-law as if we were heir. And I continued to find opportunities to talk with father-in-law when mother-in-law was not around. Then one day, father-in-law, unusually serious, told me, Mother-in-law is going on a trip soon. Depending on how that goes, I might leave this house. I tried to ask him what he meant, but he said, I can't tell you no, and didn't elaborate. I was saddened by the thought of father-in-law leaving and couldn't help but cry. After all, he was my only ally and source of comfort in this house. The only person who would listen to my complaints. Looking into my eyes, father-in-law suggested, Maybe you should consider leaving this house too, Sarah. I asked him what he meant, but all he said was, I can't tell you yet. Despite my persistent inquiries, all he said was, I'll tell you when the time comes. Please wait a little longer. Trusting father-in-law, I decided to wait until he was ready to talk. And finally, the day was set up for my husband to return home after a two-month-long business trip. It had been a long business trip but I was thrilled at the thought of finally being able to live together with my husband. The night before he was due to return, I received a call on the WhatsApp from him. I immediately picked up the phone. Instead of my husband, a woman with a sweet voice started speaking. Nice to meet you. Are you Aaron's wife? If you mean my husband, then yes, I replied. That's right. It's Aaron, Aaron Smith. My name is Amy Adams. I'm Aaron's girlfriend. I'll give him back to you tomorrow. She giggled. <laughs> what kind of relationship do you have with him? Please tell me again. I told you, I'm his girlfriend. She giggled again. <laughs> do you mean you're his mistress? No, I'm his girlfriend, and we're planning to get married. Amy, sounding slightly irritated, came off as either drunk or immature. I see. How did you meet? I'm a temp worker at Aaron's company. <laughs> she laughed. Something about the way Amy kept giggling gave me the sense that she'd spill the beans if provoked. So I decided to push her buttons a bit. Oh, my husband Aaron has been very kind to me. He says he won't have to go on business trips anymore. So I'm really looking forward to our life together. I giggled back. <laughs> no more business trips. 
Did Aaron tell you that? Yes, we were thinking about starting a family soon. We've been talking about it a lot. Oh, it's so embarrassing. I laughed. <laughs> That's impossible. I'm already pregnant with his child. I was taken aback. Amy had just told me that she was pregnant with my husband's child. You know your mother-in-law doesn't even recognize you as her daughter-in-law, right? Why don't you just get a divorce? She chuckled. <laughs> I was surprised that Amy mentioned mother-in-law, and that brought me back to my senses. Did my mother-in-law say that? Well, well. I laughed. <laughs> Not knowing how else to respond to the mention of my mother-in-law. Amy, perhaps feeling belittled, angrily replied, Have you ever gone on a trip with your mother-in-law? Because I have. The four of us had a great time. She then sent a picture over WhatsApp. In the picture were my husband and mother-in-law in summer dress, a woman who looked like Amy, and a man who appeared to be about the same age as my husband. I asked, Who's this man? And Amy giggled. Oh, I can't tell you that. It's a secret. Are you jealous that I'm close with Aaron and your mother-in-law? I thought to myself, these people are disgusting. Did you just run into them by chance on a trip? I'm not jealous at all. After all, we're married. Amy responded by sending dozens of pictures of her and my husband without a word. I quickly saved them all. Among them were several pictures of my mother-in-law cozying up with a man. All this doesn't really prove anything. There's no way my husband would betray me. Well, thank you for your time, I said, pretending to hang up the phone. Wait, 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 wait. I have proof. Just wait. I waited in silence. She then sent screenshots of her WhatsApp conversation with my husband. There were many of them and I saved every single one. Then I said, thank you, and hung up the phone. As soon as I hung up, I burst into tears. I had trusted him. I thought he loved me. I thought he was on my side. I loved him. My emotions were a whirlwind. The confident me who was taunting Amy just a while ago was gone. I stormed out of the house and headed for my father's office. I threw open the door to my father's office and tearfully asked, Where's my dad? My dad seemed too busy to leave his work, so I waited alone in the waiting room, crying. After a while, my dad took a break from his work and came to see me. I apologized to my dad for showing up out of the blue and told him everything. Dad said, You're like me. You can't stand injustice. With a smile, he added, you know, crying won't solve anything, right? His words from my childhood reminded me to face forward after I had cried my fill. I showed him the photo I got from Amy and screenshots of the conversation between my husband and Amy. As he looked at them, he exclaimed, What the hell is this? When I peeked at my phone that my dad was looking at, it showed my mother-in-law and a man standing next to her. My dad said he wanted to talk to my father-in-law. My dad, as it turns out, is a lawyer. He seemed to be quietly angry. I sensed that he wasn't his usual calm self. When I returned home and told my father-in-law that my dad wanted to talk to him, father-in-law went into the bedroom and made a phone call. After the call, father-in-law told me, I'm going to meet your dad, Sarah. The next day, I greeted my husband who had returned from a business trip with an inscrutable face. My husband probably hadn't heard anything from Amy. He seemed completely unchanged. My mother-in-law returned a little later from her trip. I'm tired, but it was fun, she said, and gave me a souvenir from the same region as my husband. As usual, the three of them ate the meal I had prepared without me. As I quietly watched the scene, my husband spoke to me. Sarah, you seem different since I've been away. Kind of cooler, he said. My mother-in-law immediately chimed in. Maybe she's sulking because you were on your business trip and she wanted attention. And said it dismissively without even looking at me. Feeling like I might say something I'd regret, 
I just nodded and smiled, my fists shaking with anger. My father-in-law made eye contact with me and told me to calm down. I nodded and took a deep breath to control my emotions. <sighs> just then, my mother-in-law started saying things that upset my calm. You and father-in-law have been living together just by you two for a while, haven't you? Something happened, didn't it? I can tell, don't hide it, tell me. She insinuated something more than a father-in-law, daughter-in-law relationship between me and my father-in-law. What do you mean something happened? I asked, holding back my anger. And she kept suggesting, a romantic relationship, right? You had one, didn't you? I can't believe it, I said, my voice shaking. My usual taciturn father-in-law asked seriously, Did you go on a trip hoping for a romantic relationship to happen between me and Sarah? Staring at my mother-in-law, when she retorted, If nothing happened, you wouldn't be angry, right? So you're admitting it. My father-in-law said, I despise you. I can't forgive you as a person. And left the room, saying, I'll be at the hospital for a while. Don't contact me. My mother-in-law told me, You can leave, too. I stared at my husband. Feeling my gaze, Aaron glanced back at me with a startled look. Observing this, my mother-in-law interjected, What's the matter? Got an issue with Aaron? Acting all high and mighty. This is why I don't want to talk to you. You should go to your father's veterinary clinic, too. She urged me out. My husband did nothing to stop her. I turned to Aaron and asked, Aaron, don't you have anything to say? We are in the away situation I warned about before our marriage, didn't I? What happened to I will protect you if my mom does anything to you? It was you, Aaron, who dissuaded me when I thought of reconsidering our marriage because I disliked this prospect. My husband seemed shocked by my outburst. Seeing this, my mother-in-law said, Then why don't you just leave? Get out! I asked Aaron, Is that okay with you? But Aaron didn't answer. He just held his head in his hands. That means get out. Aaron is just too kind to say such words. I kept my gaze on Aaron and finally asked, So it's okay. No answer means that's the answer, right? Aaron replied, I need to think. Please wait a little. And then he went to the bathroom. I didn't wash the dishes, didn't take a bath, and just went to bed in our room. The next morning I woke up earlier than anyone else, did not prepare breakfast, and headed back to my parents' home. Upon arriving, I used my spare key to enter the house and took a shower. My mother, who had been awakened by the sound, seemed surprised to find me in the house. My father also woke up after seeing my face, he simply said, good morning, and went into his study. When my father came out of his study, he handed me an envelope. I looked inside it while telling my parents about being told to get out by my mother-in-law and that I had yet to receive a response from my husband. After I finished looking through the contents of the envelope, I told my parents, I can't live with Aaron anymore. Can I come back home? My parents nodded and smiled, saying, Of course, this is your house. I bowed silently, then looked up. Seeing my face, my father said, Calm down. Your face looks like you've seen a ghost. I believe I had turned into a vengeful spirit after reading the documents in the envelope. The betrayal by my husband and the unwarranted harassment and verbal abuse from my mother-in-law were swirling around in my head along with the images. As I took deep breaths, I started to feel a strange sense of enjoyment in the situation, thinking, this is going to be the ultimate revenge. In the afternoon, I headed to my father-in-law's veterinary clinic, which was closed for the day with my father. My father-in-law seeing me called out, Sarah, are you all right? He seemed worried about whether I had been able to sleep or eat. I simply replied, I'm fine. Seeing my expression, he smiled, seeming relieved. From there, my father, my father-in-law, and I had a discussion, and we decided to take action the next day. 
First, I called Aaron during his lunch break and arranged to meet him at a diner after work. My husband came panting to the seat where I was waiting. Why didn't you answer after so many calls? Where have you been? What happened? He bombarded me with questions. I took deep breaths as my father had advised me, trying to calm myself. I'm sorry for leaving without saying anything. I was just wandering around the city. You know best what happened, don't you? I said, playing the part of the brave woman with a smile, even though my eyes were teary. Today, I needed to act like a great actress when dealing with my husband. Pretending to hold back tears, I turned around and put eye drops in one eye. My husband, misunderstanding that I was crying for him, muttered, I'm sorry. He must have thought a message had come from me since I left home. But when he opened our chat room on WhatsApp, he found call records and a lot of pictures and thought he had been exposed. With a very flustered look on his face, my husband said, I did meet with her, but there's nothing between us. I only love you, Sarah. If you're mad about us meeting, I won't do it again, so please forgive me. A storm of false excuses and apologies. I brushed off my husband's hand when he tried to hold mine and said, I love you too, but with a handkerchief to my eye, I fake cried and said with a shaky voice, Amy is carrying your child, isn't she? After saying this somewhat excitedly, I said it more quietly. Don't let the child suffer. This is my last request to you. Playing the part of a brave woman who steps back because the woman her husband cheated with is pregnant. My husband kept saying, I'm sorry, and cried, saying, But I only love you, Sarah, and that will never change. Repeating cliched lines. My husband felt more guilty than necessary and told me he would give me all of his savings and pay me $20,000 as compensation. It seemed like he wanted to make sure I wouldn't struggle, even if we divorced. I called my father and had him fill out and stamp the divorce papers, and also had him stamp the pledge we created. My husband apologized to my father, but my father dismissed him, saying, Thanks for the days you spent with my daughter, and left the diner with me. Then I went to my in-law's house to pack my things. Most of the stuff had been thrown away by my mother-in-law, so all I had was one large bag. My mother-in-law came in and asked with a smirk, You're moving out! I replied, I'm leaving now. Thank you for everything. And headed back home with a spring in my step. As I was unpacking and tidying up at home, I got another WhatsApp call on my phone. I had a feeling that it was a call from Amy to gloat. Sure enough, it was Amy on the phone. How does it feel to be a loser ex-wife? I'm on top of the world. There's no man I can't have, huh? She began with her usual gloating. I calmly responded, Good for you. Be happy. You told him you loved him. Heartbroken? Huh? <laughs> I was hurt. I think a letter will arrive for you later, so please take care of it, I said and hung up. I was excited, thinking about what was to come. I couldn't wait to see the final stage of the scenario my father had thought up. A few days later, my ex-husband and a woman named Amy sent me alimony. Normally, that would have been the end of it, but for me, it wasn't over just yet. Months later, the time I had been waiting for finally arrived. I received a frantic call from my mother-in-law. It's all your fault that the house is a mess. Come back and do something about it. And what's with this certified letter you're talking about? Pretending to be unaware, I asked her, Calm down and explain what is going on. She was in such a state of panic that it took her a while to calm down. If you can't talk about it, I'm going to hang up. I'm just an outsider now, I said. She begged me to wait and then began to explain one thing at a time. Firstly, she told me that my ex-husband and Amy got married last month, but Amy already had four children, who she brought along when she moved into my ex-husband's parents' house. The unruly behavior of the kids and Amy's lack of effort in managing household chores and childcare had caused chaos in the house. My ex-husband was in a panic, claiming, I didn't know about Amy's four kids. The alimony I received 
was reluctantly paid by my mother-in-law after Amy told her that she was going to give birth to her grandchildren. Next, she addressed the certified letter I sent her. It was regarding the repayment of the $10,000 she had taken from my savings without my permission. I asked my father if we could sue her, since she was technically still family, to which he responded with a smirk. Suing is always an option. My mother-in-law was terrified by the letter and begged me, saying that, I promise to repay the money, so don't sue me. I agreed, as long as she would return it. She also told me about Amy's current situation. My ex-husband said in front of Amy, I shouldn't have cheated, and expressed his desire to get back together with me, causing her to become hysterical. My ex was crying out my name while his new wife was going insane and their children were running wild. My mother-in-law exclaimed, I feel like I'm going to lose my mind. Eventually, my mother-in-law received divorce papers from my father-in-law and she was also being sued for compensation due to the affair. My father, who happened to be my father-in-law's lawyer, asked me to try to stop the divorce. When I heard about the current situation in my in-law's home, I realized that everything had gone according to my father's plan. Both my father-in-law, my father, and I knew from a private investigator's report that Amy had four children. Furthermore, while my ex-husband might not know this, there was a possibility that the child in Amy's womb was fathered by one of my ex-husband's colleagues, whom she was dating at the same time. Amy's parents had been taking care of the four children, but when they found out about her upcoming marriage to my ex, they told her to take the children with her. Additionally, they disowned her after learning about the affair. So no matter what happens, Amy would cling to my ex-husband's family. It seemed like the time had come for me to deliver the final line in the script. I said, You all got what you deserved. Goodbye. And blocked their calls, ending everything. After that, I found a job and started living alone near my parents' house. My father-in-law expanded his veterinary clinic and turned it into a residence. When I went to check on him, I was struck by his words. Maybe I'm happier with animals as my family he said, as he happily lived with his newly adopted corgi. Witnessing the miserable fate of my mother-in-law, ex-husband, and Amy, I decided to treat others with kindness.